there's something really strange going on right now with Congress and NASA when it comes to SLS or the Space Launch System rocket. Like this one? Sorry, it's been in the corner collecting dust. But while we await a second launch, Congress is definitely still talking about this rocket. Now, a new NASA reauthorization bill is working its way through Congress right now. That part is boring. But there's an interesting section that I wanna to bring to your attention, and I wanna thank Eric Berger of Ars Technica for bringing this to my attention. The section I'm referring to is the reaffirmation of the space launch system. That's right, this rocket that has been massively over budget, severely delayed, needs to be reaffirmed. So in this section, Congress asserts its commitment to a flight rate of twice per year for the rocket. But Congress is calling on NASA to identify other customers for the rocket. Now, if I were a customer, would I want to go with the SLS rocket or would I want to go with someone like, I don't know, SpaceX, which is a fraction of the cost and already doing business? Eric makes the joke in his weekly rocket report that this is now the subsidized launch system, not the space launch system, and he may have a point. Congress is looking to NASA to study demand for the SLS rocket and estimate cost and schedule savings for reduced transit times for deep space missions due to unique capabilities of the rocket. I'm sure if they study the demand, they'll have a pretty short list. Congress is also asking NASA to identify any barriers or challenges that could impede use of the rocket by other entities other than NASA, and to also estimate the cost of overcoming those challenges. So Congress is asking NASA to identify subsidies to lower the cost of the rocket to sell more of them to commercial customers. So Congress has directed NASA to report back within 180 days of the legislation passing about several different topics. Like I said, one of those is reasonable. The legislators want an update on NASA's progress toward achieving their stated flight rate of twice per year. They're also looking for an update on the Artemis mission. So am I. What's going on, Mr. Administrator? Mr. Chairman, uh, this is part of our commercial program, and SpaceX is signed up uh, to uh, land in September of 26. Uh, next year, September of 25, uh, we are going to launch a crew of four, three Americans and a Canadian, and they will test out the spacecraft and it will circle the moon and come home. And so I think while they'll probably still do a lunar mission with Artemis 2 to fly around the moon and come back, I'm not sure that's 100% set in stone. The NASA is looking at all these different options for Artemis 3, right? Because you've got these lingering questions about Orion, obviously major questions about whether Starship is going to be ready to land on the moon and, and most importantly take back off from the moon to get back up to lunar orbit to, to rendezvous with Orion. Um, you've got serious questions, I think, about the lunar spacesuits that Axiom is developing. Um, and so, you know, NASA is publicly talking about September 2026 for Artemis 3 as a lunar landing. I, I think that's completely unrealistic. So the troubling part is this idea that Congress wants NASA to identify other customers. And that really boils down to, is someone afraid or worried for the fate of this orange rocket? Eric points out that there is no reaffirmation needed for the Orion spacecraft. So why is the SLS rocket seemingly needing to be protected? Congress created the SLS rocket 14 years ago, and that was with the NASA Authorization Act of 2010. But like we see with many space projects and programs, the SLS rocket was supposed to have full operational capability by the end of 2016, but of course the first launch didn't happen until late 2022. The launch went really well. I was actually there in person on the bridge in Florida watching it, but the rocket won't launch again till 2025 at the earliest. And it's not like SpaceX where they're cranking out multiple ships and boosters. NASA's contractors only can build one rocket 
pocket per year. So I'm really curious what other customers might there even be. Falcon Heavy is already available at one-tenth the cost. Starship is on its way to becoming available. And there are other super heavy lift rockets that would be great candidates for government and commercial missions. I kind of wonder at this point, what is going to happen? So much money has been spent on the SLS rocket, and I really can't see it being competitive at all with other commercial alternatives. So what do you guys think in the comments? Do you think that this is a big waste of money and that we should scrap it? What, what do you think should be done moving forward? Meanwhile, SpaceX is gearing up for the fifth flight of Starship, which will probably happen sometime in early August, but this is going to be a big deal. That's because they're going to try to catch the booster with the Mechazilla or chopstick arms, and you won't want to miss it. And like usual down at Starbase, things are very busy. In fact, SpaceX shared that the Flight 5 booster was rolled out to the launch pad, so they are wasting no time getting ready for this fifth launch. SpaceX shared on X on Tuesday, Flight 5 Super Heavy booster moved to the pad at Starbase. The booster passed the nearly complete Star Factory on its way to the pad. And Star Factory, which we recently got a look inside of thanks to Tim Dodd, eventually hopes to churn out one Starship per day, which is absolutely mind-blowing. So when I asked Elon about this on the day of the last launch, Flight 4, he said that once he gets with his team, he didn't see any reason why they shouldn't try to catch the booster with the chopstick arm. So now we saw you post on X that maybe Flight 5 you'll attempt to catch. How? What do you think is the likelihood of that? Well, I, I need to regroup with the team and confirm that there aren't any other known issues. But I think uh, g given that the booster came back uh, came to a precise location, came to uh, essentially zero velocity landing uh, on the ocean. I, I think we, uh, I think we should probably try to catch it with the tower arms on the next flight. Based on the tease from the last video showing Flight 4 edited and kind of like a cinematic trailer, they had a tease at the end kind of showing that they might try to catch it. They didn't actually show the entire catch, but I think that they're on track to do that. So I can only imagine how busy Starbase is going to be. I actually felt like for the last launch, it wasn't nearly as crowded. And I'd be surprised if it's not completely crowded because this is such an unbelievable thing that we've never seen before. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope that you enjoyed this update. Thanks so much for supporting my channel and I'll see you in the next video. If you guys enjoyed this video and all of my Starship coverage, please subscribe to Ellie in Space. It's completely free and that way you won't miss any future videos. If you want to take it a step further, please consider signing up for my Patreon. YouTube revenue can be very unpredictable and hit or miss. And you guys on my Patreon are why I'm able to take these trips and help me experience the life that I'm very thankful to live down here at Starbase and many of the other places that I've gone to report for the channel and the places that I'll be going in the future.